Hey guys, welcome to the Multimedia Pro 16 VA sound card review. This is an OEM sound card from HP and in this video we will go over the details of this card. There are some sound recordings to get an idea of what it sounds like. We will also go over the software and look at all the pros and cons of this sound card. There are a couple of ways to identify the card. Here we've got Multimedia Pro 16 VA and down below here is the HP part number. You can also use the FCC ID number, a lot of eBay sellers use that to identify the sound cards. And there's another model number, it is FZT1008, that's the identification you see in the plug and play manager as well as when you install the Windows drivers. I will put up all the drivers for DOS and Windows on my website so you don't have to spend too much time looking for them. At the top we have two inputs, we've got a line in, the blue one, and the red one is a microphone input. Then we have two outputs, the green one is a line out, and the black one is amplified. So if you're using powered speakers, or you want to use the green one, but if you've got some older passive speakers, use the amplified speaker output. And then we've got the game port, and also the MPU for one MIDI interface. You just need to get one of these joystick to MIDI adapters, and then you can connect a Roland Sound Canvas, for example. And we have a bunch of headers for the sound card. The important one for DOS gaming is the CD-ROM audio signal. You want to route that through your sound card. And you can use either the red header labeled auxiliary or the white one at the top labeled CD-ROM. And here we have a look at the chipset. It is from Aztec. It is the AZT2230. Let's talk about the FM quality first. I wasn't able to find any data sheet or specifications about this chip, so it's a bit of a mystery what is inside, but it sounds identical to the real thing. So either they uh, paid Yamaha to use one of the OPL3 chips inside of this chip, or they just built a really good clone chip. Uh, to my ears, it sounds identical to the real thing, but what do you think? Let's check out a few games uh, on the sound card. Now let's talk about the Sound Blaster quality. It is compatible to a Sound Blaster Pro, so you can play games in stereo up to 22 kilohertz. It does not have the DMA clicking bug, so all the games using the single cycle DMA mode will sound just fine on the sound card. Unfortunately, the Sound Blaster quality is not that good. We have some distortion going on, there's some crackling going on, and it had nothing to do with the volume. I played around with the mixer settings. It's present at all volume levels. Mmm, I'm thirsty. I don't think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great, smarter, more aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. <laughs> 
Like I could. Take on the world. Now you might have noticed it already, but the Multimedia Pro 16 VA doesn't have a wavetable header, so you can't connect a wave blaster module. But you can still use the external MIDI interface. It's got a full MPU 401 MIDI interface, and I've tested it in a few games. It does not have that hanging note bug that a lot of, lot of the Sound Blaster 16 cards have. This chip does use plug and play to configure resources. No drivers required. It will work straight out of the box, but I'd still recommend you uh, use some software. I will explain that later in the video. Now, regarding plug and play, if you put it in a, a machine and turn it on, you should end up with an address of 220, interrupt 5, and DMA1 with Sound Blaster Pro compatibility out of the box. If you want to use different resources, there's a configuration file that you can edit, but I was unable to use Interrupt 7. Even under Windows, it just wouldn't work. I tried a couple of machines and I have two of these sound cards. I was just unable to use the sound card with Interrupt 7. Let's have a quick look at the software. Now, despite this card being plug and play, it actually works without any driver. So you plug it in and it usually should um, use some automatic settings, which is Interrupt 5, DMA1, address 220 as a Sound Blaster Pro, and if you select those options in a game, it will just work. But I still recommend that you do use the drivers, because you might want to use some different resources, and especially the mixer. The volume is a little bit quiet, so uh, and you can reduce the noise a little bit by muting the line in and some other inputs. So I'm just going to show you how I set it up, and I will put everything on our website where you can just copy paste all of this. So there are basically two lines. Uh, all the drivers, they are in the ACT1008 folder. This one here is the plug and play tool. Uh, it initializes basically the sound card and it uses a configuration file which is found in this directory as well. So everything is in one folder. And this just tells it to use the default settings in that configuration file. And this loads the uh, DOS mixer and initializes it with the um, settings in the configuration file. And basically, just copy-paste that into your auto exact batch file, uh, change the paths if you're using a different folder, but everything else is pretty straightforward. So let's go into that folder, and we're going to check it out, what's going on here. So here we have all the files. We've got uh, ACT plug and play, the executable, as well as the configuration file, and we've got the DOS mixer. And there are two ways you can configure the DOS mixer. Let's start with that one first. You can open the config file and change settings here directly. It goes from 0 to 8, so 8 is the loudest. So master volume, wave, and I muted the uh, FM chip because I did some recording. Auxiliary, so op OPL3, that's the FM chip. Wave is the sound blaster. Master volume is the, well, the master volume. Uh, auxiliary 1, that controls the headers uh, on the sound card for the CD-ROM, as well as for the auxiliary inputs. Uh, line in is the line output on the uh, back of the card, a microphone input. And MPU 401, I couldn't figure out what that does, because this chip doesn't have a wavetable header, so it might just be on the chip but not being used. And this is some sort of a 3D effects uh, thing. So we can save that file. However, if you don't like editing files, you can just run DOS Mixer and it's got an interactive menu and you just press number one, master volume, current volume is set to eight. Which volume do you want? For example, if you prefer it to be a little bit, little bit quieter, just go with seven. Same thing for wave, eight. And all the other options are just like in the config file. And when you say exit, it'll ask you, do you want to save the modifications? Yes. And it will simply update the DOS Mixer config file. And the ACT plug and play has a lot of options and you can study them uh, in great detail. But really there's nothing for you to change. Just use those lines in the auto exec batch file. And we're just going to quickly have a look at the uh, config file here because there are some things you can change. Uh, for example, you could change the interrupt or the address for the MPU interface. You can also play around with these settings here. The interrupt for the sound blaster the DMA channel, 
the base address of the card, for example, you can change them. I was successful in changing the interrupt to 10, that worked just fine, but interrupt 7, like I mentioned earlier, it just wouldn't work out for me with this card. Um, and that's pretty much it. So really, uh, there's not much you need to do, just copy paste those lines into the auto exec batch file, copy these drivers into drivers slash ACT1008 and then you can edit the config files and once you've done that just restart the computer or run the auto exec batch file again and it will update those settings. And finally just a few words about my general impression of the quality. It sounds very raw and unfiltered so if you like a clean signal this might be a sound card for you to look into. In terms of noise, uh, I didn't find it noisy at all. It does have a bit of a hiss going on in the background, but at comfortable listening volumes, uh, it was not an issue. Okay, it's time to wrap up this video and talk about the pros and cons. Let's start with the good stuff first. The MPU MIDI interface is bug free and the FM quality is really good. It sounds just like the real thing. It's also really easy to configure despite this being a plug and play card and I know a lot of you uh, despise plug and play cards but um, the software and the DOS mixer are really easy to use and that's always a, a big plus. In terms of compatibility, I've only tested this card with the usual games I test all of them worked, but this is no guarantee that every DOS game will work with this sound card. In terms of negatives, the big letdown for me is really the Sound Blaster quality and to me that's a deal breaker. The distortion and the crackling that's going on, it's really unfortunate because otherwise I would have happily recommended this sound card. I'm also scratching my head why I couldn't configure this card to use Intrap 7. Hasn't happened before with any other sound card and I have tried two machines as well, so whatever's going on here, it's a bit weird. So all in all, the sound card is a bit of a mixed bag. The FM quality and the bug-free MIDI interface, they are really good, but the big letdown is the Sound Blaster quality. We have to be fair though, the sound card usually sells for a very low price, and it should. At that price level, there are better alternatives out there, for example, an ESS audio drive. So there you have it guys, this is my opinion on the Multimedia Pro 16 VA, but what do you think? Share your thoughts down below in the comment section. And that's it for this video guys, as always the usual YouTube stuff, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you want to see more stuff like this, please do so, click on that notification bell so you get updates, hit the like or the dislike button, share the video with your friends, and otherwise ask any questions down below, I'll do my best to answer them, and I shall see you soon with another one. 